So she ran uh, last year. It was a special election in August in Ohio's 11th district. Now, the special election was created because Marsha Fudge, who was the longtime Democratic congresswoman from that represented the Ohio's 11th district, she had been appointed by President Biden to run how, uh, the Department of Housing and Urban Development. So it created uh, an opening for that seat. And uh, that that was in August. Now, I was on the ground uh, covering uh, the election about a week before uh, a week before the election. Uh, August, not the not an ideal time <laughs> for any uh, not just Nina Turner, but any uh, candidate running uh, for office. Uh, not a huge voter turnout in Nina's race. If we could put up the results, uh, there was actually uh, just about a 16 percent voter turnout for this race in the beginning of August, uh, Nina Turner uh, lost by, officially she lost by 4,266 votes uh, to Chantel Brown, who is now uh, the Congresswoman representing uh, this district. So basically in the dead of summer, uh, in the dead of summer, there was a special election. Nina Turner lost by a little over 4,000 votes. Uh, Chantel Brown was sworn in, I believe, um, a couple months ago. So essentially, it as of now, it will be a rematch. I want to be clear, because of gerrymandering, because of gerrymandering and redistricting, uh, the district might be different. Uh, the district might ha look different on a map and might have different sections, part of the district that Nina Turner ends up running. Uh, in her campaign announcement, uh, let me just read her campaign's uh, email announcing this to be specific. Um, her campaign uh, announcement said, um, doo, 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 doo. Uh, though the congressional maps are not final, Turner is more committed to serving her hometown and will mount a campaign to represent the newly redistricted Cleveland based seat. So more than likely, more than likely, she still will be running against Congresswoman Chantel Brown. But the actual district might look district might look different because of redistricting because of redistricting. So before we get to, does she have a, does she have a shot? I wanna play her campaign announcement video uh, that they put on her Twitter, uh, that she tweeted out this morning. America is at a crossroads, wrestling between two futures. Do we sacrifice the poor, the working poor and the barely middle class to protect the ultra wealthy? Or do we treat our people as America's greatest asset and ensure everyone has a real chance to live a good life? Families are struggling with higher gas and food prices, stagnant wages and shrinking benefits, while corporations make record profits. These are unprecedented times. Our leaders can't settle for just enough. They must fight for what we deserve. I'm Nina Turner, and I'm running for Congress because we deserve a voice for change in Washington. A leader who is on the side of the people, not out for the powerful or out for themselves. A leader who understands that health care has been denied to millions of Americans for far too long and will fight for Medicare for all. A leader who knows poverty is a policy choice and the minimum wage must be raised to a living wage. Who won't take a dime from special interest packs or do their bidding. You deserve a leader who is from here, who knows what it's like to grow up and live their life in this community. So that was her uh, campaign video. So I want to make a couple things clear because I think there was, uh, I think some people who just, are kind of like, oh, if she's running as a Democrat, I'm done with her. The, not, not that, you know, I understand their frustration with the Democratic Party. Trust me, I'm frustrated too. You know, progressives kind of think like, no, no, we, it doesn't matter. Run scorched earth against the Democratic Party. And I'll talk about that in a little bit, whether I think she's going to run a different campaign. But this particular, this is not a national presidential campaign. So Nina Turner in the district that she tried to become congresswoman, where again, she only lost by over 4,000 votes, the special election was in August. I mean, if, 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 if she runs scorched earth against Biden and the Democratic Party, that might excite the national base. It might alienate the actual voters she needs. Some people might not like me saying that. Some people might say, Jordan, you're you know a, a simp. You're, you're a tool for the Democratic Party. I'm just giving you actual context and history of this particular area. They were up, according to some polls, anywhere from 40 to 50 points at first. 
So I think they got comfortable in their front runner status and didn't want to do anything, didn't want to go too aggressively against Chantel Brown of a Democratic Party because she was the front runner. I don't I think they anticipated uh, that the Democratic establishment and super PACs were going to come in hard. I don't think I think they wrongly, wrongly underestimated how hard the Democratic establishment was going to come in, how hard the super PACs were going to come in. And they didn't have an answer for it towards the end in those final two or three weeks when they were getting demolished on TV. Now, uh, Colin, if we could play uh, the clip, this is right after Nina Turner's uh, defeat uh, at her, it was supposed to be her victory party, but obviously she lost. I asked Nina Turner about, you know, all the money that came in against you. Let's take a look. How do progressives combat what you call the evil money? For next time, because you were up considerably, and then you had nearly two nearly two million dollars came in from out of state. How can a progressive combat that going forward uh, to not be smeared out of the race? I don't want. I, I want progressives to be very resolute, and I want us to keep on running because we are winning. I raised six million dollars in this race. I was outperforming every other candidate in this race until that dark money came in, and I've raised more money individually. I think my race is a template for progressives in terms of how we raise that money. We got to get in, a, um, you know, earlier, not early, not necessarily early. This is a special election. We just got to plan a little, a little more. This is not an indictment on our movement. This is an indictment on dark money. Progressives shouldn't feel bad because until that evil money came in here, 35 points up, the only way they could have won is for dark money to come in here. We need real campaign finance reform in this country. It is a disservice to, to the voters to have special dark interests come in here and dictate who gets to win. If we let them win here, they're gonna keep doing this kind of stuff all over the country. And so I am more committed to ensuring that that does not happen. So, I mean, that was just in August. So to me, um, I think what she was basically getting at is yes, she earned a lot of money. Uh, I, I I think she felt, uh, I can't speak for her. I, I have, by the way, put in a request to interview her. Uh, but I think what she was getting at was there wasn't a unified, organized campaign in support of her from the entire progressive movement nationally. I think she was saying we um, need to chat, we need to compete with the dark money, raising more grassroots money. Uh, you know, but I will tell, I will say, do I think she has a chance to win? Yeah. She only lost by a little over 4,000 votes. The election was in August. It's not easy to get people to come out for an election in August. I could tell you having covered a lot of elections, most, most voters in most districts don't even know when a normal primary is scheduled, meaning a normal primary in April or May <laughs> or June, let alone there's a special election happening and the media certainly doesn't do a good job of making sure people are aware you it, it it's doable to erase a 4000 a 4000 vote deficit to me to me i think uh nina turner and her campaign better have some answers and better be damn well better prepared because there's going to be a lot of money from the same exact nefarious sources democratic majority for israel other super PACs coming in to make sure she loses uh, will there be as much money and as much focus on Nina Turner in a primary as there was in August when there were no other elections going on? Probably not because the donors, the special interests, the super PACs, they're going to spread out their money to try and stop other candidates. But because there's going to be more primaries happening because this is a midterm election year, Nina Turner's race was the only one happening at that time. With that said, her campaign better it's not just about competing. It's not just about having having enough money to compete and to counter those super PAC money. It's about what is your message? What message are you using to compete with that? So what will Nina Turner's answer be for the, sh the, sh the, the ads that are going to come in? They just beat her in August with these ads. What's her answer going to be for you're not a good Democrat? You're not a loyal Democrat. You crapped on Joe Biden. You called him voting for him like a bowl of shit. What's her answer for that? She's going to need one. 
It's, it hurt her. I'm telling you, it hurt her. I was there. It hurt her. You could not turn, could not watch TV for 10 minutes without those ads. You could not drive for longer than a mile or two without seeing a bill, billboard with Nina Turner, uh, you know, talking about Biden like this. What's her answer? Can, is she going to critique Biden with that, you know, but say, listen, that might have been a little too strong, but here are my, here are my disagreements with the current president, with Biden and the Democratic Party now. I am a Democrat, but we need to do better. We, you know, what will be her message? What will be her answer to the corporate attacks and the millions and millions of dollars that are 100% going to come back in there against her on TV, on billboards, on digital? She's going to need an answer. What is going to be her answer? Because the same exact people, the same exact super PACs and, and wealthy donors that smeared her as an anti-Semite, which worked to, to bring out all the wealthy white people in the suburbs outside of Cleveland, they're going to do the same exact thing. What's her answer to that? Secondly, what is her plan to go on offense? Because she's going to have to have defensive answers for those smears. But what is her plan to go on offense against Chantel Brown, who had no real accomplishments? Uh, if you paid attention to the race, there was some nefarious things that went on where Chantel Brown, as the Cuyahoga County uh, Democratic Party chairwoman, Cuyahoga County is what Cl where Cleveland is part of, uh, apparently, she was handing out con contracts to a business that her romantic partner owned. 